Hi guys, it's Dr. Ron Miller here with CashBasedPhysiotherapy.org and today we're going to go over three different ways that you can get startup capital to start your cash-based physiotherapy practice. So we're talking about capital, we're talking about money, and this is when you're first starting out you know, and you're getting the cash-based physiotherapy checklist going and you're working on numbers and capital, how much money will it start or how much money do you need to start with this. So let's go over a few examples here. So um, we're looking at startup capital, okay? You can get money from one, through yourself, the business owner. Two, you can get a loan from the bank or from a friend or from a parent, anyone, or you could get an investor, okay? And then down here we have our startup expenses. Okay, it's gonna you know you're gonna have to spend some money to get the equipment you need. You have to spend some money for rent. You're gonna have to spend some money for this. So let's kind of role play and kind of look over some things here, and let's see what you need to do that's best for you to get your capital started in your business. Okay, so this is right after you already incorporated your business, whether you do an LLC and or whether you do an ink, uh, it doesn't matter. As long as you incorporate your business, now let's talk about startup capital, okay? So option one, I can use my own money, okay? So say for instance, I'm just gonna use $4,000 of my own money. Actually, let's just make it five. I just use $5,000 of my own money for my startup capital investment, okay? That's the simplest and easiest thing to do here. Um, and then we look down at startup expenses, okay? You know, rent's gonna be $600 a month, okay? So I ought to take that out in that first month. And something that you can do here is negotiate with them. Whoever you're renting from, say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a startup business, you know, can I get the first three months free? And then I'll start paying after that. They give me time to um, develop a caseload and get some revenue going so that they understand that you're a startup business so maybe they're willing to work with you or maybe if the rent's six hundred dollars maybe the first month's two hundred and the next month's four hundred and then six hundred you know don't be scared to negotiate your rent a little bit especially when you're first starting out because they understand the position that you're in you're trying to open up a small business with no patients yet so don't be scared to negotiate that but for this example it's six hundred dollars. Next, you got to spend fifteen hundred dollars in in equipment. So, you know, keep it simple. Keep your overhead low. I started out with just a treatment table, a cell phone, and some basic exercise equipment, and I was able to easily start my practice for under fifteen hundred dollars here with like equipment. Next, you had to buy furniture. Maybe you had to buy two chairs and maybe a, uh, some decorations real quick. So we spent five hundred here you know, bills maybe to get the electric going or to start up some internet, you have $100 there. And say you, say you took my business 101 system, that's $500. So now you have $3,200 of startup expenses. If you take your investment of $5,000, now left to start your business, 32, 18, so you have $1,800 of working capital, okay, to start your business off of that. And maybe if you don't have um, $5,000 to invest of your own money, say you take 4000 and this just becomes $800 to start off with. But this is an example if you do your own money with this and how much capital you'll have to start your business off of. Okay, So say you have no money and you can't afford to start this. Okay, Let's borrow money from someone. Okay, so let's look at a loan, okay? Either you can get a loan through a loved one, a family member, you know, and see if they'll give you a, a lower interest rate on it. But say you can take, you know, I like the Mark Cuban approach with this is, you know, only an idiot takes a, lo a business loan out to start up a small business. So I'm all about the owner and investing my own money into this. But it's a worst case scenario, if you don't have any money, but you still want to start up a cash-based clinic, you can still do it. Let's get a business loan. So, to, so say you take a loan out for $5,000 just to start up a small business and you have to pay a percent interest on it. Say just for instance, you pay a 7% on that, okay? Now, at least you'll be able to get your startup capital, you'll get your stuff set up, and you'll still have a decent amount of working capital to get started with, okay? 
So that's an option there too, but just over the next couple of years, you know, within three years, you should almost even within the first year, if you do it right, you should be able to pay that back with interest easily. Um, but you still, it gives you the money to get started with and you have some working capital to last you for like a month or two. Okay. Now this is adding in that you're doing it right and you're not, not generating revenue in the first two months. So, you know, obviously this isn't going to last you. If you make no money in the second month, you're not going to have any money. So another option is say you want to just play it safe and you don't know what to do and you're not good at marketing. And you don't know what to do. Say you may want to take out a loan for $10,000. Okay. So you got plenty of room now with this. Now say it's going to be seven, 680. So now you got plenty of capital to give you a nice little, little window here of, you know, that you're not strapped and with so much pressure on. So maybe you want to do a $10,000 loan with this, um, to get your thing started. And you have $6,800 of working capital will ask you to give you a good window with that. Um, so that's another option there. So you have to kind of look at this numbers and see what's the amount of money that you need to get started, you know, to have working capital to get your business started. Okay. So yes, a business loan through a bank, through a credit union is great. Um, if you have uh, parents that are willing to support you with this, maybe, you know, you can get them to not give you any um, interest on it and stuff like that. So it, it all depends. So that's another option of taking out a, a loan. Okay. The third option is actually going into an investor or someone who's going to own a percentage of the actual business. Now, I don't really recommend this because say you start up, you know, you're starting up and you only have a hundred shares of your incorporation or your LLC. You don't really want to give up ownership in that just to be able to get them. Cause then you're going to constantly take out a revenue and you're a small business. It's not like you're a huge business that does million dollars in sales, like in shark tank, you know, then it's worth getting an investor to hop on board, to keep going with your business and grow it and to add in additional stuff. So we're in a cash based physical therapy practice. We're in a bad healthcare market. You know, there's not a lot of other people who know how to do a cash based physical therapy practice. So how many people are going to be a great investor to help, help you educate you to know what you want to do. Okay. So in a cash based clinic, it's going to be hard to do. And that's why I created my incubator program. So you can go onto the website and, and click on the incubator link. When I created a system where you actually can be able to get the funding you need, the education you need just to give up a percentage of the stock. And then when you graduate, you get your stock back, but it'll set you up for success. So I created this whole new cash based physical therapy incubator system. Um, you can go into the website and look at that, but I don't really recommend you selling away shares or selling away stocks as such a small business right now. It's not really worth it. So I don't really lean towards the investor program because it's not going to be worth it for you. And you're just a small business starting up. So to give away, revenue every month just to be an own, you know, to have someone else have ownership in this, it may not be the best option for you. Um, I would actually go with number one would be owners. Two would be taking out a, a business loan, but this is the setup of what you have to look at. How much money do I need to start my business? You have your startup expenses. And then if you do this right, you should be able to have enough working capital that will fit your need. You know, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to need, more money starting out to last you a couple months when you first open up. If you do know what you're doing, say you're implementing my um, one on one system, you know exactly what to do. You might not need as much money here because you're going to, you're going to be generating revenue in month one, two, and three already and not playing around saying, hoping that your marketing's working or guessing games and stuff like that. So, but anyway, hope this helps out with three examples of what you can do for startup capital to organize your capital coming in, know how much exactly your startup expenses are and know how much working capital you're going to have. Please let me know if you have any questions, join the, the 101 forum, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm here to help out and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for tuning in.